You were a very, very good driver, and if you were prepared to concentrate absolutely, the 911 could reward like no other car on the road. But if you lost concentration even for a second, it would fling you into the hedge. The 911 built up a fearsome reputation as a giant killer, but that didn't stop brave, talented, and rich men forming queues to buy one. They knew the engine was slung out at the back there, way behind the rear axle, waiting to act like a giant pendulum. But they didn't mind risking making the ultimate sacrifice in pursuit of the ultimate reward. They wanted to try and tame the 911. Three little numbers which could strike as much fear into the heart of mortal man as 666. If this car had a name, it would be Damien. Me, I used to look forward to driving a 911 with the same sort of relish that I looked forward to getting into bed at night with a tarantula. But that was then. This is now. In 1989, Porsche introduced this car, the Carrera 4, so-called because it has four-wheel drive. Now, that enabled Porsche to go out into the big wide world and convince everyone that the 911's tricky tail had been tamed. Whether it actually had or not is a different matter, but either way, Porsche's showrooms suddenly found themselves playing host to a new breed of butterfingered customer. Bye. Lie, hi, must fly. ...that they were the finest purveyors of automobiles to the yuppie classes, but behind the scenes they were bending over backwards to woo the guys in the red braces. They had the wonderful cabrio here, but perhaps more importantly was the so-called Tiptronic gearbox. Yuppie man could now charge hither and thither with a telephone permanently fastened to his right ear because this is basically a 911 with an automatic gearbox. The enthusiasts were horrified. But it was no ordinary automatic gearbox. I mean, you could use it like one, put it in D in town and just poodle around. Or on the open road, you move the lever over here and then you've got something like a bike gearbox. You pull the lever toward you, third, second, wow. And then simply move it away, second, third, fourth. You have manual control. Me though, I just leave it in D all the time and poodle around, eating cheese, taking in some rays listening to the cackle of that wonderful air-cooled six-cylinder engine. And besides, if you drive slowly, you can still hear your mobile phone ringing. The dash, though, is a mess. You really can tell the car's 30 years old from where I'm sitting. You can't see any of the dials except for the large, centrally placed rev counter, and all the knobs look like boiled sweets. But the yuppies loved it. They thought it was what the serious driver wanted. They could take their Alice banded girlfriends out for a spin and pretend that they were the kind of person who'd made the 911 notorious in the first place. Unfortunately, the real enthusiasts stopped buying 911s because they didn't want people to think they were yuppies. That would have been just fine if the yuppie breed had lasted. But as the recession began to bite, city boys on the red eye took a hit and the flash cash was gone. So too was the 911's principal customer base. In 1989, Porsche sold 1,253 911s. Last year, they shifted just 332. So they need the enthusiasts back. And now, as Tiff has been finding out, they might just have the car to do it.